This is Ken Pyle with VOD TV. We're at Parks Associates Connections Conference at CTIA. We're with the Shu Joshi of Cisco. Uh, Shu, you were on a panel about interoperability, but uh, and within the connected home. But I think uh, let's talk about kind of the big picture of that. Um, and you are looking at the big picture all the way from the home automation all the way to video. So g give us your viewpoint on that, and we'll have a conversation. Uh, absolutely. Yes. So um, uh, Cisco Systems. Uh, you know, recently uh, made a big pitch towards, you know, announced to the world, you know, and they have a tagline called, if tomorrow, tomorrow starts here. And we are actually making a big pitch in the area of, uh, of internet of things, and we call it uh, internet of everything. And our focus is connecting everything. And um, like our CTO, Padmashri Warrior says, you know, it took 20 years to connect 1% of things uh, to the internet. Uh, you know, there are 99% things, uh, you know, still not connected. And that's the quest which Cisco, the bigger Cisco is on, you know, you know, Cisco uh, across all the business units and all the business divisions. And I actually come from a business unit called as the connected devices business unit. Uh, we focus upon uh, selling to service providers such as cable companies and telecom operators such as AT&T and Comcast uh, and Time Warner. Uh, worldwide, of course, you know, we have a worldwide customer portfolio. And we focus upon, in this segment, we focus, my business unit focuses upon selling them solutions, uh, both hardware and software uh, for home automation, energy management, and things of that nature. But going back to your question, you know, where you started, you know, how, how is the, it fits into the bigger picture. Traditionally, uh, we have been selling set-top boxes and data gateways into this market. And now we are in the segment where we are selling home automation and energy management hardware and software to these same set of customers. So we have a very unique uh, position, if you may, in the industry where we can actually start converging, uh, you know, some of these solutions um, fully or partially, mm -hmm. uh, or still have the standalone capability. So if you start looking at our roadmaps, uh, moving the next three to five years, um, you know, we use a term called as unified gateways where we are going to bring video, data, and some of these services like home automation, energy management, into the same CPE, same software, hardware infrastructure. And that actually starts becoming a very powerful proposition. Uh, and it also starts addressing uh, some of the issues with interop, right? Now, now you have one, one element which actually is doing all of these things. Uh, of course, if it is architected well, uh, it can actually solve the interop problem and also provide uh, a wide-ranging uh, set of services which can work seamlessly with each other. Um, uh, example being, if I get off my couch and walk away, uh, the TV should be able to turn off, right? I mean, uh, this whole notion of machine to machine and having the right software so that uh, machines start behaving, you know, based upon what you are doing and what you want and uh, work in the context of your life, mm -hmm. uh, start having a lot of relevance. And that's where we are headed. And lastly, uh, this actually ties very well with the rest of uh, Cisco, uh, because the bigger Cisco, you know, if you look at the enterprise group within inside Cisco, which is looking at industries and factories, uh, we bring the home element into the picture. Uh, and we have uh, big business units inside Cisco, which actually sell to enterprise customers, right? So we have connected vehicle initiatives, we have connected industries initiatives. So the bigger Cisco is going to, you know, bring all of these together, but, you know, we play a big role in the consumer home and uh, led through the service provider market. Yeah, your comment struck me. It's more of like the human to machine <laughs> interface, isn't it? To make it seamless for the human. Um, one of the things, and you know, we talked to uh, 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 the Z-Wave Alliance earlier, and there's all these standards for you know, kind of that networking within the home. But at the same time, I could see where you could have multiple of those working together. Like maybe you have a sensor for a medical device that you somehow want to also have a video call with the doctor. And, and I would imagine that's a big part of your interoperability is tying these different things together, right? Yes. And, and you bring up a very interesting point. And um, I made a statement yesterday on the interop panel. Um, you know, this, what I call as the protocol soup is not going to go away, you know, for whatever reasons. And, and this is not true for just home automation, but if you look at industry standards, they take a certain time for the winners to emerge and, and fragmentation to go down when it comes to different standards. You know, a good example is uh, Sony Betamax versus VHS, right? I mean, ev those were two different standards and eventually the market chose VHS, right? Um, 
I think it's going to take some time before uh, you know the protocols and the standard starts collapsing till that time you're absolutely right we'll have to make sure that all of them work well together and I'm a big believer that industries adopt standards uh, for de facto behavior rather than some industry uh, imposing upon them a very good example is is if you look at you mentioned medical devices if you look at medical devices and fitness devices um, there are several devices on the market which consumers are buying, which are connected to phones and connected to other things. They, for some reason, have started adopting Bluetooth as their choice of interface. Okay, There is Fitbit, there is Jawbone, I mean, endless number of fitness devices which are on the periphery of health and e-health, if you may. Sure. They've adopted Bluetooth. If you look at home automation, Z-Wave has a, a lot going for itself. If you look at home lighting, uh, industrial lighting, and, and if you look at uh, things like smart meters, Zigbee has a big adoption. So yes, you know we'll have to work across all of these, uh, both at a hardware level and at the software abstraction level to start bringing them together. And and companies like Cisco, right, are in an excellent position uh, because we're not trying to pick winners mm -hmm. or we're not trying to, we believe in open standards. So as long as it's an open standard, we are going to support it. And we're going to make sure that we provide the right set of solutions for our customers so that some of this messiness with protocol soup starts going away and start leading to, uh, the industry towards a framework which allows interop. And one of the things I kind of want to focus on, um, normally when we talk about video, we're looking at downstream video and, and services can be provided, provided. but it seems uh, with the proliferation of content creation sources of video and, and the ability to you know, Skype that doctor or whatever it might be, uh, what are you seeing in that realm as far as uh, pressures on their network, pressures on the inside of the home network, et cetera? Uh, very, very interesting point. I will just add one segment before I start answering. Yes, uh, you know, a lot of people are creating content and uploading it, uh, you know, people sharing pictures. I think it's not just video, you know, people have cameras now, have 8 megapixel and 22 megapixel and uploading them is sizable quantity, right? So, um, uh, but in addition to that, if you look at this home automation segment, right, and if you look at uh, home security, for example, uh, high definition cameras will become uh, you know no, you know more prevalent you know 15 maybe 5 6 years from now but that's another upstream video which is going to hit the traffic so so yeah there're going to be multiple sources of video upstream traffic and what we are seeing is is uh, a, a number of things which cisco is also focusing upon one of the things is is a lot of people are connecting these with wifi mm -hmm. So video or optimized Wi-Fi is a big thing, and Cisco, of course, has made a very, very big push, especially my division. Uh, if you look at AT&T, uh, solution, uh, they have a lot of ads on the network where they talk about you can place your set-top box anywhere. Right. That's powered by a video or Wi-Fi solution from Cisco. So we have a uh, big pioneering approach on how to make Wi-Fi, for example, capable of taking content and moving it around, right? So that's inside the home. Another example is uh, Comcast recently launched a new data gateway, which boasts, you know, tremendous video, co you know, coverage, Wi-Fi coverage across the home, designed for video. Again, an example where Cisco contributed uh, to that effort. Going upstream now, uh, we are working on both software and hardware technologies. I'll talk a little bit about software. So we have big investments, you know, we, in, in the video space where we are looking at technologies that like adaptive bitrate, right? Mm -hmm. So those things also start becoming handy on how you bring them upstream. Mm -hmm. We have technologies like MediaNet, which watch the network at different uh, points of the network, if you may, so that, you know, we can now upload video. So, and then of course, you know, network operators like at and and Comcast are also doing a number of things to make the, uh, the their connection to the consumer home symmetric. So mm -hmm. the upstream is also equally, you know, so Doxis 3, 3.0, Doxis 3.1, which is going to come in the future, at and announcing fiber plants, you know, so, so there are solutions which need to be handled at three, four different types of uh, important points and we are working on all of those. Well, and tell us about the balance between kind of that, the intelligence in the cloud and doing everything up there versus having some level of intelligence at the home still to maybe take off some of that load. And, and you know, this is, this is a very, very important point and at the same time, this is a 
point which actually creates a lot of controversy both within Cisco outside of Cisco um, I'm going to give you a, a try and give you a balanced view uh, I am of the opinion that you know getting either two clients centric or you know the, the notion of everything being in the cloud with a thin client and the other opposing end where everything is on the client and no cloud involvement they are two extreme ends of the solution right and uh, the answer is it really depends. I think it's the problem set which defines what you want to do, right? Uh, for example, uh, if I want to be able to control lights, right, it would be a shame if the connection drops that I'm not able to turn on the light, right? So what do you do? I mean, I won't call it thick or thin. Right. I would say that functionality needs to be local, mm -hmm. right? Um, anything which can be pushed out for, a, you know, which doesn't have an impact on instant response or requires a higher latency probably is well suited uh, for a cloud-centric application. A, a good example could be processing uh, logging information to figure out patterns mm -hmm. and what is going on in your home from the sensor data could be offloaded to the cloud because you're not waiting for that analysis to happen right, right there and then, right, while I'm watching video, for example. So I think there has to be a balance and absolutely. If, 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 if I've heard companies say, you know, just go for a cheap client and you know just save money there are downsides to that approach and there are downsides to an approach where saying you know i don't want to believe in the client and increase the cost of the client balance is going to be very very key well i'll leave it on that note then it's a question of balance and so uh, uh shu i really appreciate your time and, and enjoyed the conversation all right thank you Thanks.